So, on my second video, I showed you that I was glazing my spring collection, which I was really excited about. They came out of the kiln and they're not what I expected, which is fine. That is just the process of making pottery. But um, a lot of the pieces that I used the pink mason stain with did not come out. It completely burned off, which is strange because I could see the stain at greenware and bisque. But once I glazed it, I couldn't even tell that there was stain in it. And I actually thought, Maybe I didn't put stain in it, but I could see at the bottom just slight color variation. So I probably didn't put as much stain as I needed to. And also that stain was really light. So it probably needs just like a little extra in there. Also another thing that I realized was I was using a white speckled clay and I was using this marbling technique and seeing the result, it just looked like too busy, like it's a little too much because there was so much going on with the speckled. So today I am going to re-throw a lot of the pieces that I made, but just with a white clay. So I mixed all the same mason stains just with a white clay body, and I'm going to do some marbling with those today. Um, throw some mugs and some more matcha bowls. So hopefully those come out a little bit better than the previous ones, I'll put up some photos or videos here so you can see what the previous ones came out like. It's not terrible, it's just not what I was envisioning for the collection. So I'm just letting it go and I'm remaking. And that's the beauty of pottery. If something doesn't come out the way you want, you can just remake it. I've had to learn just to like let go of things. I used to really hold on to specific like pieces like oh like this one didn't come out right and like be so sad about it but it's like I couldn't change anything about it. You just have to let it go and learn from that experience and then move on and make some more pieces. So I'm off for the next week and a half, which means I'm gonna use this time to try to get as much done as I can in the studio. So yeah, today I'm just gonna throw as much as I can and see where I'm at by the end of the session. And then, yeah, so let's get into it. I'm gonna be working with the orange first and do some marbling with that. I'm gonna have to be wearing a glove on this hand today because I sliced three of my fingers yesterday across here. So <laughs> this will protect my hand for today. Marbling these um, clay balls to throw is pretty fun. They all come out different, so it's fun to just play with it and see what kind of patterns I can make. I like to just measure out a little bit of both of the clays and then that's when I put it together.
I've got all my pieces back from the kiln. They are glazed and they're finished. So I'd love to give you a sneak peek of my favorite pieces that have come out of the kiln. There's a good amount. Um, this is not all of it. I have most of it put away, but I'd like to show you what I created. In the beginning of the video, I was talking about how the pink mason stain I used in the clay completely burned off and you couldn't even see the color. So I remade the pieces with the same stain. I added more and it still burned off. So I think it's just the mason stain that is the issue. When I went to the clay store, I was talking to an employee about how the pink mason stain didn't show up. And they told me that pinks are a little more difficult past low fire. So I saw some color chips and when it's low fire, you can see the pink, but when it becomes mid fire, it burns off. So I'll show you that piece first. This is the cup that I remade with the pink mason stain. And as you can see, it looks white. You can see slight color variation, but not that much. But I still think it's a cute cup. It's very minimal, so I'm not mad about it. You can see the slight color variation here. Um, so I guess I'm just not gonna use this pink mason stain again. <laughs> Also in the beginning of the video, I was talking about how my first pieces didn't come out how I expected. But as I was working on this second round, these cups kind of grew on me. So I'm not mad about it now. I think these are actually really cute. You can see this one is orange and it's not as bright orange as the other cups I'm gonna show you. But it's really cute. And this is the green one. I love this one. I wish I would have made another one of this cup, but I only have one of these. I also really love how these came out. I don't know if you can see in the video, but it has um, like a sage green color and this is all mason stain as well. So these are really cute. I like how small they are too. For the second round of items, I did a little bit more experimenting. So for these, I took a brown speckled clay and I mixed it with the white clay that had mason stain in it. So I really love how these came out. This one is really cool. And this. I think I'm gonna make myself one of these mugs. I really love the look of this. In this video, you'll see me making marbled mugs and this is how those ones came out. I used the orange stain with just completely white clay. These are fun. They're very vibrant. Did some matcha bowls. I photographed most of these pieces already, but I do have a few extra that I need to photograph because I'm doing a website update on May 25th. So I'm going to finish photographing these and then I'm gonna update my website and do some admin and then, yeah. I have a lot of these decorative papers that I'll use as backdrops. I think they're really fun and I love these neutral ones that have speckles. It kind of emulates the clay a little bit, but I have a ton of different ones. This one was actually white and I spilled matcha on it when I was taking a video. And so I decided to just take coffee and kind of like stain the whole paper and it made this really cool pattern and I feel like this would be a nice backdrop for some some products. We'll see. So the one I'm using for my website update is it's the same one as that stained one I showed you but it's just white. And it also spilled something on this one but it's salvageable. So I usually just tape it to the wall. I have backdrop stands, but they're for full body portraits. So this is just the easiest thing for me to do. 